Welcome back and meet the coach. I am Pat Curran here, one of the co-founders of our coaching network. And today we've got coach Garrett Mack. He is the head coach at Notre Dame College. Garrett, I appreciate you joining me. Absolutely. No, thank you for having me. Of course, of course. Talk to us about how you get to this point. Uh, and I know I know the background, but for the people sure. that don't know you. No, it's uh, it's been a wild, wild ride, obviously. Um, kind of did the little unconventional route. Started off getting into high school football, uh, coached high school for a number of years as a position coach. I was a, I was a young defensive coordinator uh, that had some success that, you know, got, got my, got a high school head coaching job. And from there got into uh, the college world. I uh, started off coaching at Oberlin college, very high academic. Um, obviously uh, you, you know, you learn a lot coaching high academic football. Like you gotta be, you gotta be on your P's and Q's. You gotta really learn how to recruit because the, the pool of kids are so much smaller um, but obviously very rewarding if you can, you know, if you can't figure out the recruiting model and all that stuff. Uh, so I was at Oberlin College for a number of years, coached a few different positions out there, uh, linebackers, defensive line. Uh, I was at Baldwin Wallace over in Berea, Ohio as well. Uh, obviously, Division Three, one of the top Division Three schools, you know, in the state of Ohio. Um, worked at worked with receivers over there, worked in the weight room as a strength and conditioning coach uh, for a second before I came back to defense. Uh, and then after that, went back to Oberlin and, you know, he'd been at Notre Dame College since 2020. Uh, I started off as uh, the tight ends coach. Um, COVID had happened and all that good stuff and found my way back to defense coach and defensive line, recruiting coordinator, run game coordinator, and became the head coach in February 2022. So that's kind of the, that's kind of the, oh yeah, the wild time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say after our, our guy, Mick Metal. Who was my old high school? I grew up with a dude, and my yeah. old school quarterback quarterback left, and he's actually the next guest here on me, the coach. Nick okay. Just okay. timed up weirdly because I, I <laughs> a month ago or whatever about doing this, sure. and uh, he's on two days after this. We'll post it the week after, but okay. yeah. How how do you think you know you've coached? I mean, how many positions now at this point? Obviously, both sides of the ball. How do you think that has helped grow you into the head coach you are today? Yeah, I think you see it so differently, right? Like you got to have open, like obviously being a defensive line coach, it's it's very fundamental, detail driven. You understand the offense a little bit. Then you start looking at the second level linebackers, defensive backs, and you can kind of, you understand a little bit more having that, you know, the understanding like what receivers are trying to do and tight ends are trying to do. Uh, and obviously as a head coach, I think it's really helped me to have that that input on both sides of the ball and not just, you know, defensively, right? Like that's the, you know, you find head coaches, like obviously, you know, there's guys out there who've never worked on both sides of the ball. And I think the one thing that's, you know, like I said, allowed me to have success and see things and understand things is, is being able to, you know, work with both sides and, you know, work here at, at Notre Dame with a high, you know, a high octane offense, you know, off the jump and with some high profile guys and then, you know, get back to defense and all that stuff. So it's definitely, I think it's benefited me a lot just to understand it. Um, and obviously make, see, understand how like the X's and O's things work on both sides of the ball and what teams are trying to accomplish, uh, systematically. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you start, you take over, you've been there for two seasons. Well, I mm -hmm. guess, the, I guess one year with two seasons there. Getting and, there. Yep. Yeah. And how did you, you know, you guys had success before you, as it, when you were there, not as a head coach and sure. you come in as the head coach, what did you bring from a philosophy standpoint and how much did you change? Did you change? Or is it like, Hey, we've got the boat in the right direction. Let's keep it rolling this way. You know, I think it was a little bit of both, right? Like, you know, you, you don't want to, you're not going to change something if it's not broken. Uh, right. But I think, you know, we definitely, you know, this past year, we put our, our own little spin on things here as a staff and the program. Uh, I think the one thing that we've kind of really done different is just like, sure, we've had a lot of success here at Notre Dame College, you know, five straight conference championships, playoff appearances, all that. Um, you know, I think the big thing that we really tried to hit home with is just don't be satisfied, right? Like, that's the biggest thing. Like, you always want more. Uh, as people always, all people always want to come get you whenever we're playing a team, no matter who it is, they're always going to get their best shot. Uh, so the one thing that we kind of just constantly emphasize is like, hey, you want to you want to get to the top. You got to work like you're at the top. You know, you got to work to try to climb to the top every day, uh, no matter. And that's kind of how we prepare guys, you know, just in the program as a whole you know, for life. Like, you know, you want to be a top of a business. You want to own a business. You don't just get there overnight. So that's something that we kind of like, try to incorporate into the program, uh, just culture wise, day in and day out. Is just how does you want to be the best? You got to constantly work to be the best overnight. Sure, sure, sure. How did you, uh, like th this off season, I guess that's the consistent message there is like, keep climbing, keep climbing. Don't be satisfied. Sure. 
Was that the biggest thing you think you worked on as a, as a team this offseason? I think the biggest thing we worked on is just getting guys in uncomfortable uncomfortable positions. Um, you know, obviously working together, being a team. Like I said, we got we've got some pretty you know high profile guys that are, are very talented with the NFL looking at them and all that stuff. And you know, they got to realize. I think we've done a really good job of making sure that these guys realize that you're not you're, you don't get to the NFL. You don't you don't like, you accomplish more when you're working together as a team opposed to just going out there doing your own thing. Like the accolades, you know, there's there's more guys watching a Division two national championship game than there is you know, week nine of the regular season. So you got to go out there and constantly put your best product out there. And in order to do that, you know, we, we really kind of ingrained into our guys. You got to work together. You got to have this team culture, this, the brotherhood, the family atmosphere, uh, because at the end of the day, everyone's important, not just the alphas. Right. And that's something that we've done a good job of. Uh, you know, I think this off season, we really kind of looked at, you know, some military backgrounds and all that stuff. I think one of the biggest teams, one of the best teams is obviously the U.S. military. Um, obviously, those guys are out there doing stuff in some unclimate weather. Got our guys in some, you know, un, probably some unusual situations, some unusual settings uh, to get them out of their comfort zone, to kind of get them competing uh, and working together in unique situations. So, sure. as you obviously know, the weather in Northeast Ohio is, you definitely take advantage of that when you're trying to do stuff like that. Interesting. I like that. I like that. That's cool. Uh, so from there, you know, as, as you approach this, this season, you know, year two for you as a head coach, what will you try to do differently than you did approaching year one as a head coach? Sure. I think the biggest thing is you just got to stick to your gut. Right? That's the, you know, you, you want to worry about all these other things and, and the, you know, the, the, you got you to focus on the big picture things. That's what I would tell people like that we're trying to do this year too, is don't worry about down the road. Don't worry about all the other stuff. Just worry about the right now, right? Like if you, if you go one and know each week, you win today, you win this workout, whatever it is, everything else will just take care of itself. Uh, and that's the biggest thing. I think, you know, I think we, like I said, obviously the success is, you know, it weighs on you a little bit that we've had over recent years. Guys are constantly looking down the road and, you know, there's the sense of, you know, we've done it before, but at the end of the day, we just have to win every day, no matter if it's a workout, if it's a meeting, if it's a run on the field, whatever, uh, just go and win that rep. So. Sure. Sure. What, what do you do to, I guess, like help yourself become a better coach? Like sure. how do you, how do you judge a successful season, a successful game? And then what do you do again to, to help, uh, you know, get yourself better every game. Right? Yeah, I think the big thing that I've kind of learned is, A, you got to be open-minded. Uh, you got to be open-minded as a head coach because there's a lot of guys out there um, who've had success, who do things differently, and you can't be, you can't be, you got to be in tune to everything. You can't just sit there and do your thing because there's other guys that, like I said, are doing things differently and they're having success with it. You got to go out there and do your research and learn uh, and just kind of network with people to see what they're doing, see what other people are doing. I think that's the biggest thing as a head coach, you know, you get, I constantly do. You're constantly trying to find new, new ways to do stuff, new ways to learn, new ways to teach, new drills, new offense, new defense. And if it works, it works, you know, but if not, like you got to be open-minded to, you know, doing something differently and all that stuff, constantly just learning. That's the biggest thing. Sure. Would you say you're a, like, are you a micromanager type or are you a, hey, I'm going to hire guys and let them do the thing type? Yeah, you know, I've been real for, I think that's one thing. I, I've been real fortunate to hire guys that I trust, uh, guys that understand what we're trying to do, understanding the message. Uh, I think at the end of the day, like, I, I, I know what I want to see and know what I want to do. And I've been fortunate to have guys that have that same message, have that same mindset. And they kind of do what they, they do what we do. They do, they have that same belief. So that's good. Not, not always is that the case correct yeah and no, i you got to trust your guys at the end of the day you spend so much time uh you know in this profession at work game planning whatever it is year round uh if you don't trust the guys that you're with then it's time to reevaluate in my opinion sure 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 and obviously as a head coach you can do that sometimes as a position coach a coordinator you don't have the luxury to say hey i don't want to work with this guy anymore no doubt no doubt cool uh, last thing i always like to end on this best coaching advice you've gotten Embrace the grind. Uh, I think that's one thing. You spend so much time, like I said, you spend a lot of time doing, you know, in this profession, you got to love what you do uh, and constantly try to learn. Like it goes back to just the mindset that we have, like I have is you constantly got to work to learn. You got to love what you do uh, and surround yourself with good people. Uh, that's the big thing too. Like, obviously this is a profession where, you know, you're away from your family a lot. 
Uh, you know, it, it's a lot easier going to work when you when you enjoy the people you're around and also embrace that family atmosphere, right? Like you got to be able to have your family come around and because you, you spend so much time, you know, here with your players, your coaches that you got to have that open door mindset, in my opinion. I love that. I think I think more and more people are doing that than, sure. than maybe 10 years ago. I think that's important. And I love that. Yep. No, I think I think it's important, right? Like you, like you know, you go off to college. Like I send my kids off to college someday, and I'm trusting a coach with you know my kid. Like I want to see how they interact and have their kids around and all that stuff yeah. as well. I think that's important. Yeah, I agree. Well, coach, I, I appreciate you jumping on with us. This is great stuff. Thank you. Absolutely, no, I appreciate it.